Energy metering is a critical function of power wall systems. Energy metering provides information about system power flow and is used to determine when power wall charges and discharges. Without meters that are installed and configured correctly, power wall systems will malfunction, leading to poor customer experience and system failure. For every power wall installation, two values must be metered. First is site, which includes all power flow to and from the house. This value is equal to what is being measured by the utility meter. And second is solar, which tracks all solar production at the house. This includes new and existing solar. This video will review the internal metering features of power wall systems, optional remote meters, and current transformer location and orientation. Backup Gateway 2 contains two internal meters, internal primary meter X and internal auxiliary meter Y. Primary meter X can be configured for site, conductor, or none, while auxiliary meter Y can be configured for site, solar, conductor, generator, or none. Meter X has pre-installed current transformers for monitoring the power flow of supply conductors landed within the gateway. If the gateway is installed as the first means of disconnect, all site metering will be handled by meter X. If the gateway is installed downstream of an electrical panel with non-backed up loads, these non-backed up loads will need to be monitored with auxiliary meter Y or with a remote Nurio meter. The included auxiliary current transformer is rated up to 100 amps. It can be extended 10 feet by using the included CT extension kit. Alternatively, these CTs can be extended a maximum of 330 feet using a 20 gauge twisted pair 600 volt rated cable. Install a remote Nurio meter if the equipment that needs to be monitored exceeds 100 amps, or if distance, obstructions, or inaccessibility prevents the use of auxiliary CTs. Note that auxiliary meter equipment is not compatible with remote metering equipment. Auxiliary CTs only work with meter Y, and remote CTs only work with remote meters. Do not splice or use Y splitters to combine different types of CTs. Always plug the CT into an auxiliary port in the gateway before clipping it around a de-energized conductor. Failure to do so may compromise operator and equipment safety. Auxiliary CT leads plug into the connection ports at the top center of the unit. By default, CT port one is for phase one, CT port two is for phase two, and CT port three is for phase one, but can be configured for phase two. If upstream site metering is required, clip auxiliary CTs around the phase one and phase two conductors. Be sure that the label is facing toward the source of current, the utility meter. When installed with backup switch, the site monitoring for power wall systems is completed with internal meter Z. Because backup switch is installed directly behind the utility meter, all site power flow is inherently captured by meter Z, and no additional CTs can be configured as site. It is preferred to monitor a solar inverter with only one CT, and then configured with the X2 modifier during commissioning. Because solar production from split phase inverters is balanced, total solar output can be calculated with a single CT. This reduces the cost and labor needed for installation. Plug the auxiliary solar CTs at the top of the gateway, keeping the phase of each port and CT in mind. Clip the CT around the phase one AC conductor with the arrow or label facing toward the direction of the solar inverter. It is preferred to use a single CT for each solar inverter for more detailed monitoring. However, you may group multiple inverters under a single CT. Grouped conductors must be of the same phase. Ensure that load conductors are not included in the grouping. Your installation may require a remote meter in the following cases. If more than three CTs are needed, if monitored conductors exceed 100 amps, if site conductors exist upstream of backup gateway and are beyond the reach of auxiliary CTs, or if solar inverter breakers are beyond the reach of auxiliary CTs. Mount the remote meter in an electrical panel. If space within the panel is limited, utilize an appropriate enclosure.
The included voltage line harness provides both power and voltage reference to the meter. Land the white wire on the neutral bus bar. The remaining leads need to be terminated in a 15 or 20 amp two-pole circuit breaker. Land the black lead on line one of the two-pole breaker. Splice the red and blue leads together and use a pigtail to land them on phase two of the two-pole breaker. If no new breaker space is available, use the provided jumper wires and taps to splice into an existing 15 or 20 amp breaker. Plug the voltage line harness into its port on the remote meter. Each lead on the voltage line harness corresponds to a CT port on the meter. Be diligent when measuring the polarity of the breakers. Remote CTs can be extended up to 15 feet with the use of one CT extension kit. If installing Backup Gateway 2 downstream of a main service panel with non-backed up loads, clip CTs around line 1 and line 2 of the main service feeders. Orient the CTs with the labels facing toward the service entrance and away from the main breaker. Be sure that site CTs are placed between the utility meter and any loads or line side taps. If a remote meter is being used for site monitoring, set the Backup Gateway Meter X CTs to none so that the site measurement is not double counted. If monitoring individual loads or solar production, Y splitters can be used to connect multiple CTs of the same phase to one port on the meter. A remote meter can communicate with a site controller over a wireless connection. Alternatively, it can be hardwired with an RS-485 connection. When installing a remote meter, use the provided antenna extension to relocate the antenna to outside of the enclosure. Fasten the antenna extension cable to one of the provided antenna mounts and feed this assembly through an open knockout that best fits the mount. Attach the antenna to the cable once the antenna mount is securely attached to the enclosure. This must be done in all instances where a remote meter is mounted inside of a metallic enclosure. If a wireless connection is not stable, establish hardwired RS-45 connection between the meter and the site controller by using the RS-45 accessory harness. Note that the meter can only receive firmware updates when paired over Wi-Fi. Before hardwiring the meter, temporarily relocate it close to the site controller and perform an update. Plug the RS-485 wire harness into the port on the remote meter. Then, connect the harness leads to the corresponding connector in the gateway labeled comms. The harness leads may be extended up to 164 feet by splicing shielded wire to the harness. For the remote meter, Connect the drain wire to the first pin on the comms connector. Connect the red lead to the second pin and connect the black lead to the third pin. During commissioning, use Setup App to verify that CTs are correctly installed with the proper orientation. Compare the solar CT readings against the production values of the inverter. Test site CTs by briefly running a large load and watching for the corresponding change. An auxiliary CT monitoring phase 2 conductors must be plugged in to port 2 or 3. CT port 3 can be configured for phase 1 or 2 during system commissioning. Remember to be diligent when installing CTs and check your work. The label of the current transformer must face toward the source of the current. Side CTs must face toward the utility meter. Solar CTs must face toward the solar inverter. Grouped conductors must be of the same phase and the same type of source. 